Hey everybody, Danny Mod here. Thanks for joining us this week. I've got a really, really interesting lesson for you. So, Peter Camden sees me, one of my students, hitting the ground behind the golf ball with his irons, hitting his driver very, very inconsistent. And he tried quite a few things, but nothing really seemed to be working. And, but we tried, or we improved his first move away, his takeaway, and it made a massive difference. And the reason being, if you get the takeaway wrong very quickly, it throws your backswing off. Now the problem is, is you're on the downswing, you have to make many, many compensations. And the problem with those compensations is, is you can hit some good shots, but it often leads to inconsistency. So if you can get that first bit right, it can set your swing up to win. And it certainly did for Peter. So I'm gonna share with you how to get that right each and every single time in a very natural way, because people do get this wrong. Sometimes they get quite wooden. Right, now before I get into the video, look, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Just press that little bell button, next subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Plus, I always put a free downloadable practice plan in the description box below, so you never have to remember a thing. Great, so let's get straight into the lesson. So what is a good takeaway? What does it look like? We'll start with that and then I'll show you how you can do it easily and effortlessly more, and more repeated, uh, repeatedly. So the first thing you'll see with any great player is they have what's called a coordinated move away, where the lead arm and club, they work away together here. So the shoulders are moving away and the arms all connect. This lever here that we've created hasn't been broken. With people who have a poor move away, they immediately break this lever and that causes problems. So when we start breaking the lever, this big lump of mass gets, starts to get thrown. Now when that gets thrown here, it's that we then start to chase the club. We start to follow the mass in, in the position where it's going. Now it's in a wrong position, we then have to look, compensate. We have to then throw the mass back out where it came from, making all these different loops, yeah? Now, you might not break the lever this way, you might break the lever by going upwards. I've seen people even trying to get good takeaways and they're breaking it and they're coming up here. Now the problem is, is your body knows that it shouldn't hit the ball over there, so it starts to loop inside and then we start to create these big hooks. So we want to create a consistent motion away, but what we don't want to do is to make it wooden, stiff, and just arbitrary, right? So how do we do that? So we've got to remember that the purpose of the backswing is simply to keep, make the downswing super, super easy. So we want a consistent arc that comes over our trail shoulder and simply works back down here. We don't want loops all over the place. We don't want it coming around here. We want a consistent arc. We also want the club face to come back square. Now the problem is, is if you're rolling your wrist, which is what Peter was doing, if you roll your wrists, you're kind of, you're gonna to have to roll them on the way back. If you throw the mass, as you say, we're gonna to have to make all these different conversations. So here's what I want you to do. Very, very straightforward. The drill I want you to work on is if you take your trail arm here, I want you to put your trail arm into your chest here. And I want you from here just simply to pivot your body so that your trail arm here, my palm of my hand is 45 degrees pointing towards the ground. Now why I love this is because it does two things. It makes sure that you make the right tilt. So most people when they're swinging they're often trying to turn the, the club away. You, remember we said before we don't want to be turning, we want to be spiraling up, we want to be kind of almost like a corkscrew coming out of the bottle. So when you keep your trail arm connected to your body here, just simply pivot it to about here, keeping it connected, palm to ground. Now put your trail hand on the golf club and look at this. There's your first motion. Not only is it just managing the mass of the club, we haven't thrown it anywhere, you're managing the face and you're managing the first bit, look, of your torso motion. So it does, it's two, two things or three things for the price of one. Put your lead arm in now and you can start to feel where your lead hand needs to be. Look at this, look at my logo here. It's almost pointing again at a 45 degree angle to the ground. It isn't, look, pointing to the sky. Uh, that would have caused me to roll the face open, right? More inconsistency, yep. And notice this, as I'm doing this, I have kept my lever intact. I have not done this. It's not a flick. I haven't lifted anything up. Everything is simply just working away. So, but what do you do from there? Yeah, because a lot of people ask me, oh, that's great, Danny, but what do I do from this position? Well, you can use exactly the same exercise. Look at this, connected here. Point the palm to the ground, and then all I want to do from here, look, is simply move the palm to point towards the sky. When you do this, you're going to feel those shoulders really loaded. Now that's brilliant because now look, you now you're not throwing the mass around. Look, you are supporting the club now. 
now it's supported, all you need to do now is simply move it back into impact. So you have managed the club, you've managed the mass. You can still swing the mass and you still get this lovely momentum, which I've always talked about. But what you're doing now is, is you're guiding it naturally along its way. You're managing the club, you're not letting the club head manage you. So from here, let's start to add some rhythm to this and maybe put the lead hand in. So for golfers playing maybe right-handed but or left-handed, you can do something similar. You can do this if you want, that can still work, but you can also do this. Keep your bicep, lead bicep next to your chest. And all I want you to do now is this. Keep the back of your lead hand just simply pointing, feel like it's pointing at the ball, or the club face pointing at the ball here. Same principle, look at this. It's a coordinated motion away. Look at this, one. Same principle, now in the lead hand. Put that down, look. One, we're not turning the steering wheel, we're working it away together. Now once you've done that, now you've coordinated, all we're gonna do is really feel like you're turning that palm to the sky here, and then we can work back down into that golf ball. Now, when you do this, do not put the club in position. Don't try to keep everything online. This is artificial. All we're doing here is just training the sensation of managing the mass rather than just throwing it away. So let's have a look at this in action. I'm gonna try and create some momentum with it first. So feel it, up and back down. And in a minute, what I'm gonna do is I wanna get some rhythm with this, backwards and forwards and away we go. Let's have a look. Lovely. Really, really nice. And one of the things that I certainly feel here is, is some of you will feel it in your, your right side, some of you feel it in your left side. You know, I often feel with this here, I feel often in both, it varies from right to left, but I, even with my lead hand there, I really feel I'm resisting, really resisting the urge to do this. It's so easy for your body to kind of stop and people, you start to get a little bit nervous. What tends to happen is when you get very, very static here and you don't want to move, if your body doesn't move, you will throw the mass, you can't stop it. So this here, whether it's your trail line moving and moving your torso here, or it's your lead hand doing the exact same thing, that there means that you're in control of the mass of the club, as well as the club face. You get static, you try and keep your head too still, your body stops, well, you've only got your hands and your arms, you will automatically throw the mass, and then you're at the mercy of this club, and then you're in trouble. Keep this all coordinated, whether it's your lead side feeling here, whether it's your trail side feeling here, then simply build some momentum in, throw that palm to the sky here, now you've got the club square, then just simply throw it back down, no messing about, and you'll start to perfect the takeaway. So let's summarize, because it's worth doing this. So you need two things. You need to manage the mass of the club face and you need to manage the face. How do we do it? We keep the lever intact for as long as possible. Checkpoints, face parallel to spine angle. You could, yes, people talked about parallel to foot line as well. All this is uh, definite, but I see when people try this, they're trying to put it in these positions. That's not what we want. We want to move it naturally into these positions. How do you do that? Whether it's your trail arm or lead arm, connect it to your body, point it, palm facing the ground here. That is not only managing the mass and the lever, it's managing the face. From there, point your palm to the sky. That then supports the mass above your head. Fantastic, now we're gonna just simply throw that mass back down to the golf ball. You can do it, same with your lead, look, one, throw the mass up above you, throw it back down to the ground, then simply start to build some rhythm in this motion until it starts to feel more comfortable. You can feel a bit strange, don't fall into a trap of staying too static. When you stay static, absolutely, this is gonna, again, you're gonna, you can't stop throwing the mass, allow this body to move, and you'll be well on your way, like Peter was, to, to hitting not just your driver, but your irons well. Just briefly on that uh, note, actually, almost forgot. With Peter and his irons, why was he catching it fat? Well, look, when you're here, if you're having to make compensations, your body starts to have to move out of position. Notice how we want to catch that ball first. When you have a great motion, you're supporting the club, you can simply look, move everything beautifully down to the golf ball. The body doesn't have to move around. It naturally improves your strike. It really, really does. But when you're throwing the mass, you're at the mercy 
of the club and it's going to dominate you. It's managing you as opposed to the other way around. So really hope that it helps this. If it does, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with one of your friends. And of course, look, there's a free downloadable practice plan in the description box below so you never have to remember a thing. If you're new to the channel, this was one of your first videos of mine, press that subscribe button so I can see you next week. But until next week, have a great golfing week.